Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting video. Uh, let's move on to page two of the journal and let's see if we can finish up these journal entries. I'll even kind of scroll in a bit because I'm sure that text is a little difficult to read on some screens. All right, moving on to our next journal, we are going to be dealing with these following transactions. All right, so on page two, January 14th, we received cash. Let's stop there. We are already seeing uh, some key phrases there, received cash. So we know that cash and asset is going up. So let's debit cash. And we received it from clients on account. So we have some of our customers that are paying off what they owe us. So accounts receivable the balance of what they owe us, and asset is going down. Next one is on the 15th. We provided consulting services for cash. So again, we are receiving cash. Now this business is doing really good this first month. Possible issue to audit. <laughs> no, who knows? Maybe they're just very successful. All right, and again, provided some consulting services. So we are going to be using our consulting revenue. Perfect. All right. Now on the 16th, we declared $10,000 in cash dividends to be paid on January 30th to all owners on record as of January 23rd. So here we're getting into dividends, which you might remember from one of your prior chapters in accounting. So uh, this 10,000 in dividends, we are actually going to have to decide uh, how much is going to common and how much is going to preferred. And you'll also notice that there are a few dates there. There is this date, January 16th. There is this date, January 23rd. And there is this date, January 30th. This is simply referring to the date of declaration, the date of record, and the date of payment, right? So we're just going to stick with the date of declaration at this point, right? Now, remember on the date of declaration, we have a couple things we have to record. We have to record the cash dividends. Again, we have two areas here. We have cash dividends, common stock, and cash dividends, preferred stock. And then also on the date of declaration, we're not paying yet, so we're also going to have cash dividends payable, right? So let's start with figuring out how much of that 10,000, 10,000, right? How much of that 10,000 is going to preferred and how much is going to common. All right, so you might remember that one of the perks of being preferred is that preferred shareholders get paid first. Right? They are entitled to their payments before anything will go to common. So when we're talking about preferred shareholders, I'm just gonna use this cell to kind of do my calculation. So what we're going to be doing here is we need to find that formula for preferred dividends. Shares times percentage times par, right? Now, one thing that we want to keep in mind is that when we're talking about shares, we're talking about outstanding shares. Only the outstanding shareholders are going to be getting dividends, right? So this is how many shares are authorized. So we need to know how many shares of preferred stock we have outstanding. In this case, we only have a thousand shares of preferred stock outstanding. So the shares in our formula is 1000 shares and the percentage is 2% and it's a $100 par. Keep in mind, where is it? This is not the par. This is how much we issued these shares for. The par is $100. So 1000 times 2% times $100 par that means that preferred shareholders are getting $2,000. Okay. Now going back to our problem, we see that the total amount being declared is 10,000. So if preferred shareholders are getting 2,000, that means that common are getting the leftovers of 8,000. And the total amount of dividends that we're going to have to pay out in the future on the date of payment is $10,000. So again, let me bring up our little sticky note. Keep in mind cash dividends, those are a contra capital account. So they will increase with a debit simply because of the contra part of that capital. All right, on the 20th, it says that we paid cash. Again, I'm just gonna go straight to that 
credit to cash since we're paying it. We paid cash for additional equipment. So we have a debit to equipment to make that go up. And then a credit to cash to make that go down. All right. On the 25th, we paid $5,000 for additional, mar additional marketing material and distributed it, it during the month. Okay. So again, we have some advertising expense. So we have marketing material. That would be advertising. We already saw above that we do have an advertising expense account. So we are going to be debiting advertising expense to recognize that that expense has now gone up. Uh, 5000 And again, we're seeing paid, so we paid cash. Okay. On the 28th, we received cash from clients on account, so we received cash, so cash is going up. And we received it on account, so our clients are paying off an account receivable. So to make the balance of what they owe go down, we are going to credit that asset. All right, next it is the 30th and now it is time to pay the dividends that we just recently declared on the 16th, right? So we see that we're paying. So let's start with that. Cash is usually the easiest one to get our head across or get our head around. <laughs> uh, next is our cash dividends payable. We are now paying this off. So we have to debit that liability to decrease it back down to zero. So we're removing the payable and we're paying off those dividends. All right, next on January 31st, we purchased 500 shares of our own common stock at $40 per share. All right, so what is it called when we buy our own stock back from the public? That is treasury stock a contra capital account. So keep in mind with contra capitals, these signs flip. So to recognize that we are buying back our own treasury stock, we are going to debit it. That will make it go up. Because again, remember contra capital, these signs will flip. So treasury stock goes up. And do we care about par? Absolutely not in this problem. So be aware of your textbook. There is a cost method and a par value method. Most uh, textbooks that I've seen and most professors use the cost method, um, but definitely take a look or clarify with your professor. Um, they might use the par value method, but most frequently we always usually will value it at cost. So in this case, we don't care about the par, we care about this $40. So we're doing 500 shares and $40 each. So that gives us a treasury stock debit of 20,000. And again, we're buying it, so we're paying cash. And last but not least, a nice easy one. We have some utilities, utility bills, and we do have a utilities expense account and also cash. Perfect. Let's check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I must have missed one. Let's take a look. Receive cash from clients on account. Done. Provided consulting services. Done. Uh, dividends. Done. Paid for additional equipment. Done. Advertising. Received cash from clients on account. Here we go. Paid administrative assistant. I'm going to go ahead and bring these down. Beautiful example about why you always check your work. Okay. On the 28th, the second 28th, paid administrative assistant, $3,000. So a, a some time has passed here, right? Actually, we can see we hired them on the 14th. is now January 28th, so it looks like two weeks have passed. And we are paying off the $3,000 that they have earned. They worked for us for two weeks, so now we're paying it off. So that is going to be a debit to salary expense. Uh, yep, salary expense. Gonna keep that consistent with our chart of accounts. Salary expense for 3,000. 
and cash for 3000 Okay, there we go. Perfect. All right, our next step is going to be posting. Um, a lot of times we might need a little bit of practice with posting. So when it's time for us to post, I will be going ahead and switching over to the general ledger tab. And then we will post every single journal entry we have done thus far. Okay. I'll see you in the next video.